Muito obrigado. Uh, good morning. Can't be that's only happens to me. Yeah, the first slide. I think there's something. Okay, great. Well, I have nothing to disclose. Um, so today, I felt that in the most programs on Venus, they somehow don't include Vin uh, filters, Vinikeva filters. So I thought that to complement this program, not that I have much to say about it, but I thought it would be nice to just have an opportunity to discuss it. That's why I placed it on the program. So it's very important, the uh, filter issue. And right now in the United States, it's, it's a big controversy about when to put them, how to put them, and uh, the temporary filters versus the uh, permanent filters. So it's a lot of discussion going on. I thought it would be nice to bring it up here for discussion during the panel. Uh, uh, during the panel. You know, they continue to have over 600,000 people that have PE in the United States. So that's really a tremendous deal uh, for the healthcare in the US. And most of these PEs come from the lower extremities, as you know, and some come from upper extremities. We are strong believers that upper extremities, I'm gonna show you later, needs to be uh, treated uh, aggressively. And there's about 50 to 70,000 deaths caused by PE. Well, the treatment basically is uh, give heparin uh, or any uh, direct thrombin inhibitors nowadays, uh, and that would take care of the problem. But about two to 10% of these patients either have recurrent venous thrombosis despite proper anticoagulation, or they have bleeding that they have to stop, and then what are you gonna do? So, mo since most of the uh, PEs come from the lower extremities, there's a tendency for us to place filters in the inferior vena cava, and of course not the superior vena cava, since 70 to 80% of them are coming from the lower extremities. Now, a little bit of history on this, and I have some interesting uh, slides to show you. First is since people in the late 1800s found out that the PEs were coming from the lower extremities, they said, okay, let's ligate the vena cava. But we all know that vena cava ligation has a lot of complications. So the next step was, let's do something minimally dramatic, like just putting a, a clip around it, so allow flow, but doesn't allow the, bleak, the, the uh, large clots to go through the, uh, the vena cava and reach the heart. So there's a lot of types, like the smooth clip, the plication, the mattress sutures, but all those led to thrombosis of the vena cava anyway. Now, I'm sure you don't know about that, but the first patent of intraluminal cava filtration, as a matter of fact, the first patent on any intravascular procedure was done by a pediatric surgeon in my previous hospital, the Maimonides Medical Center. Dr. Cohen, in 1964, described the first vena cava, did a bunch of dogs, and send an abstract and got a patent actually, US, uh, US patent in 67. And here's, uh, here's the, the filter that he designed right here and in dogs showing some clots, picking up clots. And he patented, as you see here, send an abstract to the ACS, the surgical forum. And was not good enough for them, they actually denied it and refused him. So he got discouraged and said, forget about that, that probably doesn't work. But he basically did all the work. And um, at the same time, a year later, Moby Udin came with this filter. You see the same concept basically is a spring a wire, but has this whole uh, umbrella around it that also caused 66% of vena cava occlusion. So also that was abandoned. I'm sure uh, some of you have done this in the, in, in the previously. Interestingly enough, six years after Cohen described that, Greenfield filter comes up Coincidentally, with the same exact design of a filter, and uh, although he cannot get a patent on it because the patent was already described, but becomes known as the Greenfield filter. So, that's for the history. In terms of indication, it is now acceptable universally that if a patient cannot be anticoagulated, either because of contraindication, failure, or a complication, that you should think about placing an IVC filter. There's no much discussion on that. The new CHESS guidelines that came out last year they recommend exactly what I said before, but they also alert that if a patient has a PE and he and he's an anticoagulation and doing well, you should not place an IVC filter. I know a lot of IVC filters are placed, at least in the US, on patients who have large PEs, but there's not no longer recommended. And also something that's being pushed a lot is to resume anticoagulation. Say the patient had contraindication because of GI bleed. As soon as he's fine, three, four weeks later, actually he does not need this filter. So you can either put a temporary filter to remove it and start anticoagulation then. So that's the recommendation. Be aggressive about re-anticoagulation uh, on these patients based on the PrepEx study that was published in New England Journal of Medicine. 
Now, this is for discussion here. You have a large free-floating thrombus in the vena cava or iliac. What are you going to do? Well, it's not an absolute indication. DVT and a uh, very uh, limited pulmonary reserve is also not a, con a, a absolute indication. Trauma and prolonging, prolonging mobilization. Cancer patient with associated risk factors. History of DVT in candidates for hip or knee replacement. Gastric bypass and morbid obesity. All those now are questionable indications. So really have to, you have to, doc if you're gonna do one, you have to really document in the chart of the patient why you're doing it, and there was extensive discussion with the family because of the complication, long-term complication with the filters. For example, you have a free-floating clot in the vena cava, you have in the common iliac. 10 years ago was no discussion, just go and put the filter right away. Now we really have to pay attention and discuss it. It's no longer an absolute indication. Well, there's a bunch of filters in the, in the market. I won't spend too much time with those, just show you a couple of examples. You know, the bird's nest is for the very large vena cava. People forget about that. And you really have, when you do a venogram, you have to measure the vena cava, otherwise they'll float. Or if they don't float right away, they'll float, you know, a couple of months later. Uh, but all these are permanent filters. The Simon National has two double uh, safety uh, nets. And you can put it through an intercubital kit that was very popular at some point. The vena cava the, is self-centering. Uh, I don't think it's, no, it's longer on the market, I hear, recently. It's a French uh, filter. And the trapeze that was very popular a couple of years ago um, because we could put it through a six French uh, catheter. It's a permanent filter, but could be also a, a temporary filter. Now, uh, the introducer size goes from 14 on a greenfield uh, stainless steel, 14 French, to six French in a trapeze. Seems very attractive, everybody was doing it. But we noticed in our practice that these patients actually had more vena, vena cava thrombosis and we decided to do a prospective randomized study. So initially we published the preliminary results with the trapeze filter since it was very popular and we were all excited about it. And, but we, find out, we found three patients that had symptomatic IVC occlusions within a short period of time of using those filters. And we're putting a lot of filters. In the Northeast, in the United States, people put a lot of filters. In the West Coast, with Peter Lawrence is, they're much more conservative and probably they're right in not placing filters in everybody who, who sneezes. Um, here we go. So basically, I don't know why I did that, I'm sorry. And basically what we did in this prospective study was to prove with statistical significant difference that trapeze were much, were much worse than the Greenfield filter. They had, we had five patients that had uh, thrombosis of, ili of the iliac veins or, or vena cava. That actually, that little paper, killed $350 million business for that company. I'm sorry about that, but uh, the results are, are much better now since we're not placing those filters. So there's definitely a rate of uh, iliocava thrombosis with the trapeze filter. Now they all trap emboli uh, with the same. Anything less than three millimeters uh, won't be trapped. Anything more than three millimeters will be trapped by all these filters. The MR, I don't have to worry about it except for the bird's nest. After a while, they're all safe after a couple of uh, weeks and it's really not uh, a big deal because that question comes a, a lot from the patients. In terms of recurrent PE, the, the literature is not clear because there's really no prospective randomized study in these in this filters. Actually, there was never a prospective randomized study for, place, uh, for the placement of an IBC filter. Nobody had the guts to do it, but again, we're using it all the time. The patency varies always over 90% in the majority of the uh, filters, so the patency is not so bad, but the problem ha happens with those few percentages of patients that have vena cava thrombosis, and some of them will die from that. The hemodynamic changes are so severe, particularly if it's acute, and they can, can die from that. So there's a lot of complications with, with the filters, and we have to rem remember them. They're all listed here. I don't have much time to go because I want to move on. And uh, you have complications in the site, or in, this, in, in the insertion site, DVT, and you can have the worst, which is the filter migration after the heart. And uh, so there are some concerns uh, because of these complications and the fact that the patients continue to have an increased chance of DVT once you have a, place, uh, a filter place. They have less PE, but they have more DVTs. And they also have migration, perforation, and, uh, and other complications. So here's some examples. Partial thrombosis of the vena cava, Complete thrombosis of the vena cava from the filter. Filter migration to the suprarenal. Filter migration to the heart. Actually, we had three cases that we documented were not our cases, were from other hospitals, but they came to our institution and they still had the filter. One had five years later with absolutely asymptomatic, but many times they cause arrhythmias and PEs. Here, how does it end up here? I have no idea. 
right in the renal vein, right renal vein, the filter, and perforated it. This filter I know, that's an impossibility, but believe it or not, it's a filter in the aorta. So the patient has one in the aorta and one in the vena cava, and I hope that the surgeon did not double bill. So that's the idea of the temporary filters, because those things can com complicate, so why not just put them when the patient needs them and then remove them? And the, again, you have a bunch of them, the brown temporary filter, the Lysol filter, the select filter that I showed yesterday, uh, and here is just showing how you retrieve it. Just go from the ne up from the neck, the incision, uh, place the, uh, the snare, the snare catch the uh, hook, and then put the sheet over it and just remove it and always do a completion venogram, make sure there's no perforation. Here's the BARD. The BARD one, the G1, came off the market because it was embolizing, the limbs were fracturing. There's a big deal with those new uh, filters with the limbs fracturing. So we have, we have to be very careful with that. The ways to retrieve it, you have to retrieve it if you're up to, if that was the, the condition, that was the, the plan. So either you treat with a snare or you have a little cup that catches, it's easier to get it with a cup. And you, there's a lot of little techniques. You can put a balloon, if the, uh, if the uh, hook is into the vena cava, you put a balloon from below to push it outside to hook it. There's, a snare, there's different types of snares. There are biceps, uh, biopsy forceps that you can catch it. But the FDA is very concerned about that, and they have received 920 device adverse reports involving the IVC filters. So now they think that it's the responsibility of the surgeon or the interventionist that put this IVC filter to follow the patients and to make sure that they come up for retrieval, and you have to document that. Remember, 27% to 82.5% 82 of the cases have not even attempted retrieval. People just put it, and the patient doesn't come back, and they just leave it alone. So that's a really big deal. So they recommend now that prior to retrieving it to get an uh, abdominal CAT scan and look at the venous phase, look for patency, integrity of the filter. You have to count the limbs, location of the filter, and location of the legs. And you have to, of course, document all that. Remember, there are close to 260,000 filters placed in the United States last year. That number more than doubled in the last five years. And I think the FDA and the uh, Medicare and the CMS uh, Institutions have now put a break on that by decreasing the reimbursement rate. They almost got in half the reimbursement rate for IVC filters, and they have increased the reimbursement for retrieval of the IVC filter. Just 15 seconds on the indication for the superior vena cava filter, since we have uh, one of the largest experience in the world. The, uh, again, the chest guidelines last year said stop the IVC superior vena cava filter, use it only if you are exceptional circumstances in the specialized centers. Actually, I disagree with that. I still think the indication are the same as lower extremity because five to seven percent of these patients with upper extremity DVT, proximal DVT, would develop PE. That was shown by the Mayo Clinic, was shown by our very large series with over 200 patients. And so the rationale is basically, as I just mentioned, as long as the vena cave is more, superior vena cave is more than 3 cm, and you have no clots in there and no anatomic anomaly, you can safely place it. We have follow-up of 12 years now with SVC filters and we keep publishing once in a while experience. Now it's in 250 cases. And we have follow-up in many of these patients and the filter remains in place and it's very safe. So if somebody has a large DVT, cannot be anticoagulated, my indication is still to place an SVC filter. Now, don't place the SVC filter in patients that are male and under age 60 or, or younger than 60 years old. We had four perforations and, uh, and, and the only complication we ever seen with this filter actually were in this young group of patients, so male, we're less than 60 years old. We don't recommend putting an ICVC filter. Thank you very much. Sorry, you went over.